come with me, Jake Turner, as I travel the back roads talking with your neighbors and crop experts about best practices in weed control in soybeans. All you need is a minute and authority minute. In today's crop production systems, measuring and keeping track of your yield is crucial, since many input decisions are made based upon product performance. In this episode of Authority Minute, I'm headed to Marshall, Minnesota to talk with Ben Prusia, a precision ag manager at Central Crop Consulting. Let's find out just how important it is to calibrate your yield monitor. Ben, thanks so much for coming out here and sharing your knowledge with us. No problem. So tell us about why it's so important to properly calibrate your yield monitor. Well, it's important to, to calibrate it because uh, even from year to year, it can change in the accuracy. If you happen to have a new machine, uh, when you first get it, uh, the sensors are not going to be very accurate from the factory. So it's important to um, calibrate it so you get an accurate result. And from that accurate result, you can go ahead and then make better management decisions from your data. Now, for example, you can find if you, it's profitable to tile your field or not. Uh, you could check and see the difference between yields in a tiled versus untiled field. Uh, with good accurate yield data and a good year for it, you can create variable rate seeding maps. Now, harvest time is a very, very busy time for everybody. So what are some of the things that growers can do to prepare for getting accurate yield monitoring calibration before harvest time? Well, Jake, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the fact that we can do some stuff before harvest because uh, working in the industry, I've always seen people kind of in a pinch or in the busy season. So, but there's a lot of things you can do beforehand to start preparing uh, so it goes a little smoother when you actually start harvesting. Um, and one of those things is with software updates. If your local dealer probably talks about them or not, and you can get a software update to your yield monitor. Now, in my opinion, there's like, uh, I would advise people on when to update or when not to update. My recommendation or advice there is if you, it worked before, if the season before it worked perfectly, and there aren't any new feature enhancements that you like to get, just go ahead and leave it. Uh, kind of like if it's not a broke, don't fix it mm -hmm. policy. If there's a new feature or if there's something specifically addressing the problem that you had, then go ahead and get your, get your software update done. So could you show us how to properly name a field, Ben? Yeah, you bet. Um, when you name your fields, try to use a general name. So something that could be used for multiple years. Uh, so maybe avoid putting the crop type or the year in there. So I'll just go ahead and do this one and I'll create one that's called Dad's Quarter. Um, and it is case sensitive also. And notice here I'm going to use QTR instead of a one slash four. Stay away from those symbols and we're good to go. Pretty painless. You can have them all in there before you go to the field, save yourself some time. Anything else we should be doing before we get into harvest season? Yeah, you bet. You can get uh, a memory card. So you, this is an example of a compact flash. Here's a USB. There are a couple of the more common ones out there. You want to make sure there's enough room or you clear off last year's data if, if you need to. And Ben, there's still a couple more things we can do before harvest. What are they? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we can make sure we have the proper number of rows programmed into your corn header or the proper width for your bean header. Now, one feature that I don't see guys utilize a lot, if you're using a GPS system, with this combine it's called auto cut width. Uh, other brands might have a little different name, but the general idea behind it is if you go over an area that you've previously harvested, it's going to automatically stop your logging. A lot of people don't turn this on and therefore their acres are off and that hurts the accuracy of their data. If you turn this on, it can be pretty helpful to do that. If you don't have GPS, then you manually adjust how much of your header you're actually taking to get a more accurate reading. But once again, that's something you can do ahead of time to get much better data. Yeah, just make sure it's turned on. What actually happens when we're doing yield monitor calibration? Sure. Well, a general overview is we're finding what the combine sensors think for moisture and weight. And then we're actually going to take samples and find what it actually is and then correct what it's thinking to what it actually is. So we're correcting it so we get a more accurate measurement of what's going on. That's right. So Ben, you want to get us into the meat and potatoes of this? Yeah, you bet. So far we've kind of covered everything you can do before the season, before the actual calibration. Let's get started. So Ben, once we're in season, what's your process? 
Well, uh, the first thing you can do, some systems require a vibration and a temperature calibration. So you can do those first before you start to, uh, start to harvest or get out in the field. And then uh, we get into distance, right? That's right. Um, you have to do a distance calibration. Uh, I get asked often about distance calibration. Do you still have to do it if you ha you're using GPS? My recommendation is yes. Uh, it's good to have that as a backup in case you would lose signal or um, for whatever, have a GPS failure or something like that. It's good to have that in there as a backup. So yeah, go ahead and do your distance cal. And what about weight and moisture? Well, to harvest weight and moisture, you actually take samples of grain. Now, each system is going to be a little different in how they recommend taking that sample. So again, back to that user manual, uh, to get some specifics on how to do it. But one thing with moisture that I, I see all the time is you have to have an accurate moisture tester. So in general, we're, we're taking that sample and we need to find what the actual moisture is. If we don't have a properly calibrated moisture sensor, here's an example of one, but if this isn't calibrated properly, then we're putting an incorrect reading into our system and we're not gonna have accurate data. Bad input, bad data. Same thing goes with the scale. You have to have a scale on hand to read your weight. If you're at scale, you wanna have that thing properly calibrated, make sure it's zeroed and stuff like that. Well, Ben, thanks so much for your knowledge. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming. Talking with Ben today showed us the value of performing yield monitor calibration at the beginning of the season, whenever there are changes in crop types and any drastic field or equipment changes. Accurate data is an enormous help in making wise decisions. After all, if you've paid for the technology, you want to get the most you can out of it, right? This is Jake Turner reminding you to stay safe out there. See you down the road when you have a minute, an Authority Minute.